Well, it might be a 1975 tooling, but there's life in the old dog yet. First impressions time. Yes, hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff, another first impressions video for you today. Focusing on this, the SDKFZ222 uh, Lighter Panzerwagen, which I think must mean um, light armoured car, uh, I'm, I'm going to guess. And as I said, this is a 1975 Tamiya tooling. Uh, this particular kit was reissued in 2003 um, with new parts which is some photo etch and uh, a metal barrel we'll look at all of that in a minute uh, and they have um, released it again since back in 2007 when they did a sort of African version. Now I built this in the 80s and I absolutely loved it um, it was a nice compact relatively well detailed kit and it actually offers you lots of opportunities for for weathering and and being in a convoy in a diorama and, and all sorts of stuff so without further ado let's have a proper dig at this classic so kit. we have ourselves a fairly small compact box on the front we get a typical tamir approach we have uh, an image of uh, the model um with no background or, or any context to it at all. Um, it does tell you uh, what it is that we've got a 4 before, that it's a 1 to 35 um, scale uh, military miniature series, gives us a kit number of 270. Um, it says it's a highly accurate static display model. Well, that might have been true in 1975. Um, comes with a realistic figure. Um, and it's a ready to assemble, no paint and glue, um, and skills helpful if you're under the age of 10. So, it also tells us that there is photo etch parts and an aluminium gun barrel. So, the gun barrel is the main gun and the photo etch parts is the uh, anti-grenade mesh. Right, so that's the top of the box. Our sides pretty much say the same. Um, then we get on the side we get an image of the photo etch that's included the aluminium barrel uh, the fact that it contains jerry cans and drums and i don't remember if it came with jerry cans and drums originally or not so that might be something they've they've thrown in uh, as a value add you, you could certainly used to buy them as a set on your own and, and i know that i did but i don't think they came with it originally i might be wrong if you know for sure uh, tell me in the comments um, and then this is an image of the the figure that you get um, and i remember him quite well um, yeah and then on this side we show you some more armoured cars that you might be interested in. Um, and I certainly have built that one and I've never built that one and I've always meant to and I've never got around to it. But all of those, I would say, were classics in their own right. I'm fairly sure I've built that as well. Um, but yeah, so there we go. When we open the box, we get our familiar um Tamiya style instructions we'll look at those in a moment um, we've got our drums and jerry cans there um, in a different color plastic which suggests to me that uh, that did come in a, in a different set once upon a time um, but I do like the fact that we've got all these little dents and dings in there um, so the, the mini art set of uh, oil drums you have to put that in yourself as you saw when I did the tiger tiger diorama um, but uh, Tamiya have done that for you. Having said that, I think the mini art ones probably have uh, a little bit better detail with the separate rooms and things, but they all look good. We've got imprinted uh, lettering, but we'll have a look at them properly in a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, there's our photo etch and our aluminium barrel. That looks nice. Separate decals. Um, they look quite familiar. Uh, what's it say on there? 2003. So they did resort the decals. Um, 
and then we've got two sprues in that bag two sprues in that bag and our two part body no interior detail at all there you go that's what's in the box let's have a look at the so instru our instruction manual is um, the familiar Tamiya gatefold single sheet bespoke size um, manual um, so no staples it, it has its advantages um, it's easy to fold and, and stay on focused on a small area um, but it's also a little bit unworldly it's black and white there's no color in it and it's probably um, unamended from its original release in 1975 so if you remember um, early Tamiya kits you'll remember some of this stuff on the front we've got some history um, and it talks about the development of the vehicle under weapon uh, restrictions post First World War um, but it ended up being um, uh, quite um, a widely used vehicle in the Second World War um, around about a thousand units being produced of this particular um, variant then it goes on and gives us um, some cautions um, <laughs> this is interesting read carefully and fully understand the instructions before commencing assembly a supervising adult should also read the instructions if a child assembles the model so yeah absolutely absolutely great so some some little tips there so what they're basically saying is youngsters can do it but they might need a little bit of help which which i think probably goes without saying uh, there's some recommended um tools and products there um, including spray metal primer um yeah um then um we've got a key this marks the um uh, color to be painted um, then we've got our paint list and uh, what have we got two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve colors listed obviously uh, only Tamiya's so if you uh, like me and not a big fan of Tamiya paints um, you'll have to do some cross-referencing but there's nothing in there that's not really a standard color and a lot of them are actually for the figure um, so it depends on which paint scheme you're doing uh, as well so but we'll get to that we are then on step one and that is building the bottom piece of the plastic extending the putting the chassis frame on which has the springs and things molded in uh, because of the way they've done it and because it was tilled in 1975 don't expect too much these days they'd all be separate parts and it'd be a, a lot crisper clearer and and probably more accurate however you put a wheel in front of them and you're pretty much not going to see them so does it really matter um, then we're putting the um, door in step two we've got um, drive shafts going in that's a single single piece molding so assembly is nice and simple if you're new to modeling this kit goes together very very simply and easily uh, then we've got the um, tow hooks going in uh, front and back of the vehicle um, and then we've got a bit more of the um, suspension uh, a little protective armor plate on the front and then we've got the spare wheel which is in its uh, canvas bag and that has some nice detailing on it as I remember um, and it, it paints up quite well then we're building up the wheels so we can see we've got um, a, a front wheel with a molded hub in uh, uh, sorry a front front of the tire with a molded hub in then you've got a, a separate back hub and a, a part of the tire so that sits inside and allows the wheel to rotate is basically how that works and then there's a a, a little hub guard that goes on the front there um, so you can see them making them all up there then we are in make sure i'm keeping all of this in shot see one of the downsides for these gatefolds is they don't really work quite so well for youtube reviewers right 
five we've got the wheels going on i gotta be honest i wouldn't be doing that at this stage i'd be leaving the wheels off right till the end um, because what's going to happen when you're building up the other parts you're going to be putting pressure on the wheels and they're going to be straining these parts and you might find things start to break and once a wheel breaks off uh, and you're gluing it back on it becomes more and more delicate every time so leave it alone there's lots of written instructions around these images as well so um, you can see it's showing clearly with the arrows where things go um, but it's saying things like note the wheel direction um, and you know don't touch the wheels until the cement has hardened all of that sort of stuff so it's really really taking you through the basics so really handy for, for new um, new modelers um, then we are building up the gun and it's asking us to use CA to attach the metal barrel so they have amended this because I think I'm not sure but I think that was originally molded in one piece so they must have amended the tool in in some way um, now you've got your ammunition going on a couple of seats going on um, and uh, yeah, so uh, you might want to look at some reference pictures and see if you can uh, detail some of that. It is a little hard to see, but actually the seats end up being relatively prominent. So if those seats have got holes in or something like that, then it's probably worth having a look at that. And at this point, you if you're going to weather it, this is where you want to be weathering before you insert it. So in step seven, we can see it, it's being inserted. It's a fairly basic way of inserting the uh, the gun mechanism, but it works. It's the only interior detail that you get. But when you look into it, you can't see much past that anyway. But it is important that you paint at least sort of that section of the inside. Um, then step eight, we're putting all this sort of outside details on so we've got viewing hatches you can't model them open so they're closed only um, you've got the um, uh, engine covers going on headlamps going on um, it's pointing out bits to remove so that you don't mistake it for being part of the model it, it realizes that you might not know what it's supposed to look like um, there's a little antenna mount going on there um, and the turret um, it works like they're um, tank turrets where it, it it slots in and then you twist it to lock it uh, and I, i've said this before but the little tooth underneath if you just whip that off it makes that a lot easier to put in place and you're less likely to damage it i seem to remember it was really quite tight but then i brush painted in in those days so my paint might have been um several microns thick i would imagine then what we on that was eight so step nine um, and we've got some of the big stuff going on so we've got the uh, mud guards going on fire extinguisher mud flaps stowage bins uh, jerry cans which are already molded in there then we've got um, the other side of the vehicle um, so we've got jack another jerry can um, more stowage bins the uh, uh, number plates at the back and the exhaust system um, and then right at the front there you've got an indicator flapper and um, a, a, a wide marker I forget what they're called it has a name um, step 11 it's talking about removing uh, the photo etch um, I, I would absolutely recommend you do not do it the way they show there where you're dragging the knife across the gate because that's how you deform your photo etch. Uh, you need to come down from above it with a chisel tip and cut straight through it so that there's no movement of the photo etch. That, that is wrong. Um, right, that's step 11. Where's, where's step 12? There we go. Step 12. Um, so we're bending the photo etch and placing it on top. That allows you to have it closed but as you can see you can model it open as well um, then we've got a spade going on molded on brackets and the like um, and the, and the, another flapper and the, and the ornaments that go on the front there uh, then we've got some um, 
smoke discharges, uh, we've got a tow cable which looks like you get some string, it says cut string 15 centimeters long. Didn't see any string but I'm guessing we must have some in there. Um, then we've got the paint instructions for our figure. Um, as you can see that's most of the paint colors. Um, then step 13 which I think is an additional step, I think that's how it used to end, um, is our jerry cans and uh, oil drums. Oh, fuel drums so yeah and that completes the build 13 steps it's fairly chunky plastic so it's gonna go together easily young hands will cope with it very very well uh, then we have some talk about uh, painting um, a little bit of history about the about the colors uh, then there's some uh, instructions for applying your decals um, and then we have paint scheme A, which is first company, fourth, I'm not even going to pronounce that, it's a motorcycle battalion, um, 24th Panzer Division, South Russia, August 1942, um, and yeah, so all over one colour, uh, and then it's showing you where your decals go, so national markings and the like. Um, then paint scheme b first company uh same motor uh, same motorcycle battalion i think yeah yeah uh, for, oh no uh 10th 10th motorcycle battalion um 10th panda division tunisia 1943 um so it says here original hall color was remained around white markings um, so basically they applied the, the desert colour scheme, the, the sand colour, on top of the uh, German dark blue and went around the national markings leaving, leaving a patch. So even though they've not shown that on there, that's what they did. So this is why it's really important to read the instructions and not just look at the pictures. Um, so yeah, really cool. And then there's an option C as well, which is... North Africa, March 1941. So I'm guessing that's an all over yellow. Uh, and the thing I like about that scheme um, is you get the little palm tree decals with the swastikas in, uh, which, are, uh, which are pretty cool. So I think when I do it, as much as I like the uh, Wrigley Worm camouflage scheme, I would go with the all yellow over the top of the uh, grey. That means you've got paint chipping in the grey which will really stand out contrast well against the yellow um, then you've got your your, uh, your rust staining your fuel staining your exhaust staining um, you've got uh, dust and, and uh, rain streaking uh, and then additional chipping metal chipping so on and so forth so there's so much you can do for this um, and then i think that completes the instructions so let's have a look at our main uh, body parts to start with so this is our, our bottom piece and you can see there is no detail at all on here so there's no welding seams or rivet heads or anything like that so you may want to do some research to um, super detail it and it's likely, given the age of this, that there is tons of aftermarket out there. I know for a fact that there's resin uh, resin wheels um, and a, a spare that doesn't have a cover on in that set, but uh, there's bound to be all sorts of photo etching stuff out there as well. Um, right, so uh, it's got detail in there, so there's all sorts of little bits and pieces in there that when you look at it side on um, some of it will be visible in profile so that is that is nice um, it's despite its age it is really quite crisply molded still uh, Tamiya do a very very good job of looking after their tools um, there's a little bit of clean up on there uh, where it's been cut from it, its gate but it looks fine all the ejector pins are on the inside where you're never going to see them so um, yeah i think what you might want to do is just put a little bit of plastic card in the bottom there to cover up those ejector pin marks save you a load of time um, just before you paint the inside 
When we look at the uh, top piece, um, the only real detail is this um, hatch cover here, which has got an, quite a nice little uh, bracket on it, a hinge on it, I should say. Um, and then we've got this waffle pattern grating at the top. And that, uh, that should be mesh that you can see through. Um, but you can paint that up um, and put a little wash in there uh, and it's just the same. The, the problem is if you decide to drill it out and put mesh on it, there's nothing inside to actually see um, and the plastic is so thick that you're ending up then thinning that out and, and so on. But if you're looking for your first scratch building project where you're going to start doing a little bit of detailing yourself, this is a great little vehicle to start on because it's very simple, it's not, it's not too complicated, so there's all sorts of things you could do. But our little location parts for all our viewing ports, um, the uh, lumps there are for mounting our front uh, mud guards. There is some sink in the front, but that might just might just sand out when you get the two parts together. Um, I'm talking of putting the two parts together, get them the right way around. There you go, the fit is, as you would expect from Tamiya Engineering, pretty much perfect. Um, but yep, yeah, you've got a little bit of wriggle room there to sand that flush. So that is our first two parts. I will take some photo, sorry, I will take some photographs of these at the end of the video. Uh, you'll be able to see these in close up. So as is Tamiya's way, we have a bag that's been stapled closed, which has two sprues in it. Um, we'll deal with this one first. So we've got we've got the, the main turret which is a single piece. Um, it's nicely molded with uh, some little uh, details around the openings for the gun. Uh, clearly it's a little bit too thick. It should be thinner than that and it wouldn't surprise me if there was aftermarket out there to replace it. We've got our mud guards. Um, our uh, little vision hatches there um, which all look quite nice and crisply moulded got little fastener details on them same with these little hatch covers uh, we've got the, the little gutter, the rainaways so some nice little details even if it's just a little bit on the sort of uh, slightly plain side and not quite defined. So if you look at these headlamps for example um, you've got quite a bit of seam on them um, and you're not then sure whether that seam or whether there's supposed to be a lip there so you need to do your research but uh, you can see the centre bits of the lamps just don't just look like they need to be a little bit wider and not, not quite there. Um, but for 1975 uh, no problem at all. Um, and we've got a little, uh, we've got our smoke discharges there. They, they, they look fine. Yeah, painted up. There'll be no problem. Then we've got our figure. I remember that facial expression very well. Uh, again, a little bit soft molded. So uh, the the markings, the the, the um, eagle there is a little bit soft molded and disappearing. Uh, same with the back, uh, the hat detail. But when you detail paint it. You'll be surprised how that crispens up. Um, so yeah, he's wearing the uh, black uniform with piping. So you'd have to see whether you need to change your figures out if you're doing a, a North uh, North African uh, vehicle. Then we have the original um, grenade uh, frames. Now, uh, how that might be handy as a reference when you do the photo etch, although I think the photo etch is cut in a way that, that it'll fold correctly. Uh, how they used to do it back in 1975 and indeed in the 80s when I built it was you got a little square sheet of black square mesh and you, you had to cut it out to size and glue it in. And to be honest, it looked really quite cool and it looked really authentic and you felt like you've achieved something when you built it, but you won't be using those parts there, there from the original tooling. We've got our Notex light there. Um, the uh, jerry cans molded in 
I don't know, I'm sure if you can find aftermarket you'll be able to replace those and then you can put one in separate or have one uh, have one empty or put something else in. But if you have them separate, you've got the opportunity to hang a helmet from it or a, a, a gas mask canister or something that just adds a bit of animation. But fundamentally, there is nothing wrong with any of those parts. They're crisp, there's no real sync, there's no certainly no flash. Um, you know, they're, they're as good as you would have got back in 1975, in, in fairness. Yeah, okay. Uh, the one thing you will have to do is add your own aerial. So um, a little bit of stretched sprue uh, and you're, you're rocking and rolling on that. Right, the second sprue that's in the bag uh, deals with the gun and we've got, uh, and, and also the spare wheel. So you can see the detail on the canvas cover for the spare wheel is really, really nice. Um, and that comes up really well under paint. You've got some cleanup to do on the seam, uh, fairly heavy seam on there, but that won't be a problem at all. Uh, then we've got the, the seats, which are fairly basic but that could be completely accurate i don't know um all the little gun parts there um and then we've got yeah some of the some of the frames that build it up and that's the the main bound, uh, mounting point that you're uh, you're going to build it up upon um some of it looks a bit chunky and it looks a little bit sort of um detail free in places but most of this is going to be hard to see, so uh, I wouldn't worry too much. So, like I say, I'll take some photographs so you can look at it properly. But it covers all the, the main prominent details. My next bag has um, another two sprues in, and indeed, I have located uh, our tow rope, which is a nice natural colour. It's a little bit furry, so you're going to have to wax it. Um, uh, but that should look uh, pretty cool. You could even stain it as well if you wanted, or if you wanted it to be a, a steel cable, you could uh, you could paint it, and that will deal with the with the furry effect as well. So uh, gun metal or something like that, and um, but you want to cut it to length uh, and what have you, and sort that first before you paint it. So that's our string. Um, then we've got. Our first sprue here, which is sprue B, um, we've got our wheels on here, and they. I was always impressed with the plastic tyres. I prefer, I prefer them to the vinyl um, at that time point um, because they're moulded really crisply, and you can see all the little um, steps in the tyre wall going up to the uh, edge of the tyre. It's really nicely detailed tyre, even by today's standard. Uh, even resin tyres would, would struggle to be a massive improvement on that. Obviously, there's no um, sidewall uh, lettering, um, which you would get on a, on a resin tyre. So uh, a resin wheel is probably an appropriate upgrade, I would imagine, um, because you do have some cleanup once you've put these in the back there. You've got a little gap that you've got to, you've got to sort out. So there is more work than perhaps possibly you'd imagine are on the wheels but those are our wheel centers the the mounting points that go inside and they do work really well um, uh, then we've got our mud guards which has got a basic tread pattern on it but um, it uh, it's raised dots but it is a little bit basic and quite thick and chunky so you'd really want to uh, replace that with some photo etch or some plastic card and, and, and put some pimples in it or something like that. Uh, then we've got our little doors there which have got the, those bumps so we can mount um, uh, these, these boxes on them. Uh, we've got more hatch covers, hub covers, our little spade which actually nothing wrong with that, you know, painted up, that, that's totally fine. Uh, I've got our tow hooks dotted around. Then we've got our vehicle width indicators there. They've got quite a bit of seam on. They'll need a little bit of uh, tidy up before you can use those. And uh, jack, fairly basic, solid end. Uh, so again, you, you might want to look at, at um, swapping that out. You might have something in your spares box from another build or something. There's always these things that you collect, isn't there? But 
yeah, that's not bad. Uh, you know, there's no real issues. A little bit of flash on the seams, but that's just the kit showing its age. And to be honest, I think it's standing up well from 1975, uh, in, in fairness to it. So the uh, second sprue that was in that bag, it's got the um, frame for the, the chassis on it. And you can see we've got things molded in. Now you can make these look more realistic by just scraping behind them and rounding them off a little bit. Um, so, because you do see those, they're quite prominent, um, but you, you're a bit hard pressed to see the springs, but they don't look that bad. They don't look that bad. Paint them up, give them a wash. No one would really know. Um, then we've got um, the transmission and a drive shaft and stuff. A little bit of seam clean up, but again, um, it's relatively well detailed. Um, the little armoured thing there, that's always something that you want to do lots of mud splashes and dust and stuff on. Uh, then we've got our um, eyes for the end of the rope. Now they give you four, which means you could um, put more than one of those ropes on. Uh, depends on how much they've given you. You might be able to get two out of that rope, possibly. Um, our exhaust pipes there. Um, so again, a bit of seam clean up, but otherwise all good. Then there's our exhaust silencer boxes. Uh, and the exhaust pipes themselves will need drilling out or you get some uh, metal metal pipe that's the right gauge trim that back put the metal pipe on so you've got you've got some uh, pre-drilled pipe rather than drilling it yourself especially if you're worried about not getting it on center um, then we've got the grill and the cover that goes over the grill um, so yep fire extinguisher and um, the, the bottom pieces for the suspension, I'm sure they've got a name, but I don't know them. Mud flaps, a bit chunky, replace them with some white card um, and you won't go far wrong there. Um, otherwise, yeah, all good. And you could replace that, use it as a template and replace that with plastic card as well. But what they have done is tapered the sides so you can't see that it's as thick as it is because that's got to be a good two millimetres thick, that. Yeah, so our photo etch, it's um, the, uh, the Tamiya Nickel photo etch, so it's good and strong, sturdy photo etch with a nice relief etch for the mesh. It's actually very nicely done. That's going to look really realistic, going to look far better than the mesh they used to put in that you cut yourself. So that is a very, very nice upgrade. Um, you probably want to anneal this before you... Uh, before you bend it um, that'll just make lining those up a little bit easier take the spring out of it um, particularly as this tends to be quite tough um, photo etch and then when you've done that um, you might want to consider uh, a little bit of solder and clean up if you've got that that sort of experience but otherwise if you line it all up and you and you um, heat it up to take the spring out of it so that it stays where you where you put it um, and just a bead of uh, thin CA should should do yeah that's a that's a nice upgrade as is this so I'm not going to take it out of the bag but what we've got is a turned aluminium uh, gun barrel it's got um, nice little detail there on that ring it's got some flats on it um, and then we've got detail at the gun flare you can see there that so those would be holes to let the uh, discharge gases out uh, and then you can see we've got an open uh, flute on the end so that's a lovely upgrade as well so that's two good things Tamiya have done since 1975 with this kit nice and jerry cans uh, now i'm pretty sure that if you buy their uh, fuel barrels and jerry can set, you get two of these. I think that's what you get. Um, these look very familiar to me. Um, so yeah, um, as they go, they're pretty good. You've got you've got uh, text printed on the on the cans with uh, with the emblem on. Um, you've got separate um, handles, which is good. You've got separate uh, separate filling caps, and then with the barrels, you've also got lettering and and numbers. And like we said before, they've put some nice dents in. Um, one of them has the uh, center plug taken out. Um, they do supply you with a couple of plugs if you want, um, but that's to allow you to put these 
different parts in so yeah nothing wrong with those really handy you've got a bit of a diorama in a box haven't you and finally our decals and uh, decals have never really been Tamiya's strong point and in fairness um, I, I would like to see someone argue differently uh, what you can what I can see is that the decal film is um, to the left and the bottom of every decal so you've got quite a bit around this sort of area L shape on on every decal so um, yeah uh, they don't feel as chunky as, as some but you can feel them all so <laughs> they are quite chunky um, but you get these lovely African markings um, with the swastika in which is really nice um, and then the, the the number plates as I remember them they overlap a little bit so trim the decals up a little bit before you put them in um, the um, markings appear to be in register but be careful with them sometimes it's easier to paint them on because they do sometimes uh, the, the register can be a little bit off sometimes with tammy decals um, but yeah um, you, you've got everything you need there and they're clearly marked and relatively easy spaced out for for cutting out with your decal scissors oh, well, there you have it uh, Tamiya's 1975 SDKFZ222 um, with a couple of uh, nice little upgrades uh, bringing it into the back end of the 20th century um, what's my first impressions uh, well you know what um, I think it's a real shame that Tamiya continue to package these um, like they package their new tools because you don't really know what's new and what's not so I always urge people when you're buying a Tamiya kit do a little bit of background search first so you know what you're getting um, Having said that, I think this is one of Tamiya's classics. Um, it was a really popular um, kit um, in the 70s and the 80s. It's been um, overtaken by more modern kits, but, but this is still a classic in my mind. Um, and I'm looking forward to building it again. And what I'm going to do is I, I was given a, a, mod, a hardbacked modeling book um, I can't remember whether it was birthday or Christmas present, and I can't remember my age, but there is a picture of a diorama with this in, um, and I think it's got a couple of uh, Tamiya figures in it, and I would really, really like to try and emulate that, because it was a really inspiring image. It, um, it had um, camouflage netting on it and stuff like that, and it, it's what that it, that single image stepped me out into starting to scratch build a little bit and add bits and modify things and not just build things straight out of the box like the instructions said so i'd like to revisit that and see if i can do something a, a, along those lines um because it was a really a really nice picture so i'm looking forward to building this at some point um i don't know when that will be but yeah um, highlights of the kit, uh, we've now got the uh, photo etched grenade uh, covers, the turned aluminium barrel, um, it's easy, uh, the, the part count isn't high, the parts are all fairly uh, chunky, so it's a really easy beginner's kit this. Um, it will go together it, without any problems, you're not going to have any fit issues, you're not going to have to do anything other than clean the scenes up and slap it together so from from that point of view for, for beginners this is a, a absolutely brilliant kit but for more experienced modelers there's still plenty to go at there's loads of weathering opportunities uh, on this particular uh, vehicle uh, whether you're doing it in in Europe or in Africa you've got loads and loads of, of opportunities and I'm sure there must be bucket loads of um, aftermarket for it so it will be easy to turn it into a scratch build project It'd be easy to turn it into uh, an aftermarket project or really easy just to use it as a weathering project so it has so much scope those are all the positives um, uh, on the downsides it's 1975 tooling so it's a little bit basic around the edges now it's a bit simplified it's a bit soft molded and it lacks a little bit of uh, a detail so um, I'm sure there should be uh, more detail on some of these surface areas. I mean, you can see some of them in the pictures. There's little um, 
uh, hooks and bits and pieces that simply aren't included in the kit. So, uh, yeah, it, it's it's simplified. Um, it's an old kit. Tamiya really should be uh, clearly saying on the front this is a, a, a classic kit like Airfix do. And I'm just looking now as we're talking, uh, and I can't find anything that says the year this was made. And again, Airfix clearly tell you um, date of tooling, date of decals, um, and de date of issue on the box. So, you know, they're upfront about it, Airfix, and Tamiya should do the same. I think it's a little naughty. But there you go. Um, that's a splendid kit. Um, it will be a lot of fun to build, I have no doubt. And I'm looking forward to doing it at some point. Uh, and if you are in the mood for revisiting a Tamiya kit, you'd do a lot worse than revisiting this one. It's a nice little kit. It, even built standalone, it's, it's a really nice kit. Okay, there you go. Thank you very much for looking in. I hope that was useful. You enjoy your modeling and I will see you very soon. Thank <laughs> you.